Let me try to be very brief and direct. Um, so let me first take the issue of race, which was object and affirmative action, which was object of David and Caesar questions. First thing, um, you know, the the self, the the, the, the share of the population who self-declare as blacks or mulattoes, the Afro descendants now is more than half of the Brazilian population, it's 51. So it's different from the US where it's 12% of Obama was elected with 12% of uh, Afro-Americans. But this is not an issue here. Marina, he, she could run as, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, try to raise this flag, etc. But this is perhaps not an issue, uh, you know, opinion polls, etc. I don't know that very much, but uh, I imagine that. But what the data shows is the fact that uh, is that uh, income of blacks are growing much more than income of whites, and this, this is the first time I see that in the in the data. I saw income of blacks going up together with the income of whites and fall together. Uh, but this thing we've seen with r r r gender issues, of course, for many years, but not racial issues. And this is happening in, since 2008 to, two, to 98 to 2008. The rate of income growth of blacks this was even higher, it was three times higher than the incomes of whites. So there is something new there, and I, I think we should look at it. Uh, more carefully, I think, you know, as inequality changes in Brazil, there are lots of these types of changes, but I agree that this is not an issue. What I, uh, in, in, you know, in the political debate for, uh, there, there was this question about Cesar Zucco, uh, of Cesar Zucco, about Bolsa Família and other programs, if they reach more blacks or not. I found that interesting results uh, which I found interesting, which was the following. If you compare someone which is equal in all dimensions, low income, low education, uh, it's a woman, lives in a favela in Salvador, tarará, this is a literal exercise we did, her chance of accessing Bolsa Família in 2006, if she was black, was 56%. If she was everything equal, but she declared herself as white, was 50% chances. So I'm controlling for education, especially income. So what I'm saying is not this Bolsa Família is reaching the blacks because blacks are poor in Brazil. I'm saying that it's more than that. We have some implicit affirmative action that is not in the design of the program. Bolsa Família doesn't say that. The, you know the, the 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 design of the program, but that's what the data shows, and it's a uh, you know uh, perhaps uh, uh, social assistants, uh, social social agents when they go to the poor families, they they think that if someone is black, it's more likely that they are poor. So these well targets policies that look after the uh, the poor they tend to find uh, blacks more often, and that's what the data show. The same thing happens to people who live in favela. So uh, there is really something in the data. Uh, we have in our research some websites, uh, and some interactive data sets, uh, where you can look at these issues, and I really find very, very interesting things going on there in these racial issues. I'm not a specialist on that, but uh, I think we have been looking very, I agree completely with David, very little to this, to this issue. One thing to Paul Segal initial question on education, unfortunately I cannot uh, answer, you know, if the older cohorts, I know the, the income growth with the low educated people is much higher than the high educated people. And um, among, more or less along his intuition, uh, we just did a research and we are doing, we released that in our website and we are doing another piece, uh, which show, uh, is something we normally don't look at, 
but there is a revolution in professional education in Brazil. There was an increase in the stock of people with professional education in just three years of 75%. The share of the active age population that had the stock variable, professional education, in three years went up from 12 to 21.5% in the main metropolitan regions. So what I think is that uh, and that's something we normally don't look at here in Brazil. We have some sort of, uh, we don't have the habit uh, of doing that. So there are things going on there. And also I had the experience, the data shows that, but talking with people in the favelas, etc., you see that, you know, even poor people, they have very few kids, which this is a big reason behind the the share of the, the, the rise of this new middle class and these poor people are caring more and more about their kids and they're thinking oh you ask them what do you want uh, what, what's your consumption dream you are new middle class well, you want a car what do you want no, I want to go to the university but I think I won't make it but my daughter will and you know they had the picture of their only daughter in the middle of the living room and I think and they're caring about the education of their daughters. So I cannot answer your question about difference across cohorts. And uh, this rise of professional education is consistent. Uh, it happened very much with the young population. It's not like the elderly that could be you know, going to professional education schools, perhaps not learning that much. But there is something going on there, but unfortunately I cannot uh, 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 answer that. that uh, just to, to finish, uh, Vin uh, Vinicius uh, Vieira question on the consumption ratio. There is a, a recent World Bank paper, I just saw a resume of that uh, in the newsletter, using recently consumer expenditure data that shows that I'll, I'll know, uh, although 9 out of 10 economists would say that consumption uh, savings rate in Brazil fell in the last five years and I would be in that group uh, it went up so Brazilian savings rates are going up but they are much lower than uh, China and India and I'm not very positive as I said before that they will go up in the future uh, uh, I, 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 I'm not very positive that this will happen. And just one final thing about difference between BRIC countries. Uh, for example, that there are many differences. I think BRIC is a very interesting concept, not because it's a homogeneous, but because of the heterogeneity, forces us to compare very different cultures and economic and social and political uh, places. Uh, um, so, um, for you know, India, the rate of fertility is still very high. India is very low. Brazil is going down. And one in 1970, every, Brazi every Brazilian female had 6.2 kids. Now, 1.9 below reposition rates. So, uh, I think this is a, 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 a great question. I just took part in a project. Uh, 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 commissioned by OECD, I was responsible by the Brazilian sites on inequality, so perhaps it's of your interest. Just came out a book, and uh, the case of Brazil, India, China, and South Africa, not Russia, was analyzed, and how this country, including uh, South Africa post apartheid, inequality has been going up very sharply in Brazil. And, and as I said, less, uh, like the rest of Latin America, it's going down. So I think it's a fascinating uh, question and a subject, but our time is too short and my knowledge is also not that, that big on the subject, but I think it's really worth looking at. Thank you very, very much, Marcelo. It's, it's complicated to talk to a microphone without seeing anyone, so it was particularly impressive. So we Thank are very you. thankful, and I pass you to Tim, Tim Power again. Marcelo, Thank this you. is Tim Power again. Um, Thank you for an excellent presentation. Really appreciate your patience. 
So on behalf of the Latin American Center and on behalf of all 700 people in the auditorium here in Oxford. <laughs> That's the good part of not seeing. Thank you very much for your excellent uh, thoughts today. We really appreciate your joining us from Rio. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, team. Thanks a lot. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave my... Uh, uh, team has my email, my phone and I'll send him a few links uh, so what I think is the interesting part of our work in the Center for Social Policy is that uh, we devise some data sets that you can look at and I think there are many interesting issues happening with political implications in Brazil and we have not you know not only us but I think uh, uh, the whole community of analysts in Brazil, we haven't explored just a little bit of this uh, interesting uh, period and data. Thank you very much, Tim. And, uh, Thank you again for sharing your work with you. Excellent. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.